I'm telling you the truth, okay? Whatever happens, will happen. Yeah, no hurry. When you cannot walk, don't run, all right? Then the demon will come and grasp you because of your uh, hurriness to want to be uh, somebody <laughs> in the universe. Just be cool, okay? One step at a time. Mm. Uh, yeah, I also did not think that one day I will explain this to you. It just happened. Normally I just sit and make joke to you and uh, answer your question, you know. But I think uh, you grow up now. No need to ask so many little questions anymore, okay? Master, how I meditate, how I repeat the five names, I touch my head. <laughs> Shake my hand. <laughs> okay? I think you grow up now just like my Buddhist teacher, monks before tell me I can read this now. Okay? Now is time you can hear this, okay? Yeah. Maybe it's the time. I did not think of this before. Even before some uh, couple of years ago, I only think reading Buddha's story for you only. Bedtime, you know? <laughs> yeah, like that. <laughs> Bedtime story. This kind of of sutra. It's hard to encounter, and I don't think many can explain this to you. It's a high sutra, understand me? High level of teaching from the Buddhas. He taught to his high monks, who has been with him a long time. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. If it helps you, I'm already very, very... Ah, happy, happy, and feeling satisfied, really, yes. But if you cannot understand, then there's no harm anyway. <laughs> at least you can look at me. <laughs> yeah, because you came to look at me, right? <laughs> you also did not expect this. I don't know why last Sunday I just, just spontaneously promised to you. <laughs> I did not even study. I mean, I did not even check. Check back the sutra where I was. You know, that's why I told you I keep looking for the demons and he keep disappearing. I forgot the page. Keep looking because I remember Buddha talked about demons. And I tried to find the demons in this book. It took me a long time. I remember there were some demons in it. You remember? And then when I promised, I talked to you because uh, some of you come to me and say, you are on a seven or an eight or nine level already. So I thought maybe it's a time that I should explain to you uh, all these demons are lurking around, yeah? And then I remember there are some in here, but because I don't know where, you know? A long time, I don't know. I keep looking one page after another, and then I take the whole bunch of pages, I still don't find it. It's not like I know where it is. <laughs> it's what I promised already. I have to find the demons. <laughs> and you now you have some. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all terrible. He doesn't even think any Buddha above him. Yeah, <laughs> this is bad. Okay, so the demons of memory hold his mind suspended in one place. Imagine, this is kind of suffering. You can't control your mind. He hold it captive in where your memory zone are, you know, and he flooded you with all kind of, of, of bad memories that you don't want to remember. This is only, you should know it, only when you die. For ordinary people, all your deeds from the whole life, or maybe even former life, will flood back to you at the minutes that you are living, your soul living, to remind you that you have not been good. And so the sentence that is going to be passed on to you after you leave the body, you deserve it. Oh. Only normal people die without master, without guidance, without protection, we'll experience that. And now even you have to undergo this. You cannot move, you cannot escape. It's like somebody forced you to watch a DVD or television that you don't want to watch. It's very helpless, frightening, and scary, eh? and frustration, uh, no wonder. But nevertheless, okay, in this stage of samadhi, he can go further, okay? He can go further, it will pass. If you have faith in the Master and your teaching, you will pass. So further, in this state of Samadhi, the good person sees the disintegration of the form uh, Skanda and understands the feeling of Skanda. His wisdom becomes stronger. Mm, not bad. Becomes stronger than his Samadhi. 
his wisdom becomes stronger than his steadiness in meditation. Yeah, that means stronger than his samadhi. Okay, so and he mistakenly becomes impetuous. Okay, become unsteady in his temper. Uh, because he, his wisdom become too strong, overcome his calmness. When you're in samadhi, you steady, you peaceful, uh, you calm, hmm? and very uh, composed. Yeah, but because he knows too much now, he has wisdom. So <laughs> normally we will want more, more wisdom, more wisdom, master, one wisdom. But if it's too much, then you are out of balance. Yeah, you out of balance, and then you cannot bear. Of course, yeah, the wisdom will make you feel restless, and you become impetuous. Okay, good. So cherishing the supremacy of his nature, he imagines that he is a Nisis Yanda Buddha, a kind of Buddha, some kind of Buddha. Yeah, and rest content with his minor <laughs> achievement. <laughs> The Buddha is really <laughs> not generous. <laughs> Up to all these 10, 11, 12, 13 levels already. Uh, wisdom and clear voice and everything. And he's a minor achievement. Oh, please take care of your ego for me. Okay, minor achievement only. Yeah. You guys see some of you, oh, see Buddha, see lion, then go out and talk to people and tell them you must do this, <laughs> do that. Too proud, okay? Minor achievement. Okay, brother? Mm. So, this is called applying the mind, but straying away from constant examination and becoming preoccupied with ideas and opinions. Hmm. Yeah, okay. You may be steady in your mind now already. Yes, you might be able to control your mind, therefore you... You don't uh, be under the grip of the memory ghost anymore now. Okay, fine. But still, you forget. You see, the Buddha say you strain away from constant examination. And then you become preoccupied with ideas and opinions. Mm. You forget because you're too big now. <laughs> you feel you're very big. Too much wisdom. Mm. And then you forget... Uh, you forget that it's just a minor achievement and it will pass. Yeah? You're too busy with new ideas of stemming from your new wisdom that you never had before. You think you're big and wow, grand and uh, have different opinions now that you never had before. Wow, you're big, big, big. So if he understands, then there is no error that he knows oh, it's just, just one of those stages that I will pass through. This experience does not indicate sagehood. Not yet, not yet. Oh, man, where will we be? When can we be sage? Oh, man, <laughs> a lot more demons come in still. But if he, he considers himself a sage, then a lowly demon that is easily satisfied will enter his mind, a lowly demon only. As soon as he sees someone, he will announce, I have realized the unsurpassed absolute truth. <laughs> me, <laughs> I, look at me. <laughs> okay. Lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. <sighs> Let me have a drink. <laughs> Not yet. When I drink, you clap. <laughs> so you don't hear me, and then you feel thirsty. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just joking, man. Where's your wisdom? What stage are you in now? <laughs> A winter of the soul or something? It's good. Uh, it's good. It's good. We are just joking around. It's good to relax your mind a little bit. Oh, I see you all very tense up, you know? Oh, what? What? What next? <laughs> what kind of demons coming? <laughs> yeah, yesterday, no, the day before when we cut ribbon, you know, I don't know what happened. I feel very kind of tense. 
I normally very relaxed, you know. That day, I don't know, some of the MC is so... Hmm? Master, they were so nervous. They were nervous? They were very nervous. They were like shaking. Why? They were shaking? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Imagine if they do something else. Just, just holding the microphone or some scissor even. <laughs> huh? Have something to hold on even. Oh, no wonder. I feel so, you know, stiff inside. So what's happening? But what can I do? I still have to cut the coconut, you know? <laughs> Next time we don't cut coconut anymore, the poor coconut. I don't know. I learned that from India somewhere. Why do they cut the coconut in any ceremony? To break it, to break the ego. Ah, to break the ego. Oh, that's a good thing. No, Master, that is, what is the meaning. Okay, okay, fine. <laughs> So, so they meant I should sacrifice my ego yesterday, the day when I cut the coconut? Uh huh. all right. <laughs> Next time I don't cut it. <laughs> Otherwise people think I have ego. I don't have an ego. I'm so humble. <laughs> you and I, humble. I'm such a humble person, okay? You see that? <laughs> Sitting here, being very humble. <laughs> What can I do? <laughs> if you're a teacher, you have to teach, right? <laughs> ego or not. <laughs> All right. Do you feel I have a lot of ego? No. How come? No. Supreme Master, sitting here, <laughs> exploring the difficult sutra, and no ego? No. How possible? I must be hiding it somewhere, right? Pocket or <laughs> in my shoes. <laughs> huh? We feel love. Oh, you feel love? <laughs> she says you feel love. <laughs> love. What English are you speaking? Canada? <laughs> you what? Bosnian. Ah, Bosnian. No, no, I feel love. You say love or love? Yeah, okay, love. good, good. <laughs> you feel love also? <laughs> no, Master. The coconut is brown outside, like our mind. Uh -huh. When you break it, inside is white. white like uh -huh. so, I, am, I am pure now. I surrender. Oh, I see. Oh, what a pity. I love that coconut. I would love to eat it. Uh, in Thailand, uh, your sister have a place for meditation, huh? big, but nobody come because they are more convenient in Bangkok. And I stay there. Oh, a lot, many coconuts around. And the neighbors, so kind, you know, always come every few days and say, Ah, I have to take this coconut down for you because it's already ripe. He knows it from looking only because they live with coconuts all their life. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. And he take it down and he chop chop immediately, make me eat it. Uh, and I liked it so much. I have like three, four per day. Yeah, and later I learned to do it myself, so I just do it, you know. Oh, why wonderful. I have a big bunch of coconut to put under my table. I just, uh, you know, take care of, uh, cut the, the skin outside and then and you just hold it in your hand, chop the head of the coconut, uh, uh, coconut fruit, yeah, and then you can have it. I don't feel like doing that anymore. Even I feel sorry for the coconut, but I love coconut juice. Yeah, and the, the tender inside. Mm. They forced me to eat it yeah, voluntarily, <laughs> I did. <laughs> Every day I enjoy that place very much. Nothing, just a, a little clear roof and some cooking intense. And I love that place, especially the coconut. Yeah. Every day. The neighbors also, all the relatives and friends or family of your two sisters, the one who built the place. And they love me too bit. They're not disciples though, but know what master is. Always I chant this, I chant that. <laughs> yeah. We get on well. That's why I love that place. Uh, they are devoted, but they leave me alone. Huh? Just very casual neighbor relationship. And so loving and kind. <laughs> we get on splendid. <laughs> yeah, so this is the problem when somebody thinking that uh, due to this demonic uh, influence, the one, the demon who is so easily satisfied, just a little, little accomplishment and he feel great already. So he influenced this person who may be too eager to become uh, something, yeah? So the, the, the demon will come.
and make you feel that, that you're Buddha already. And then you cannot help it but uh, boast to everybody that you are the Buddha. This is a different. When I take the first disciple, I didn't even know <laughs> I was a master. They forced me to it just because they think I'm something. And because I just say, you have the book I want it. They say, they don't have. I say, ah, you have it. I saw it in your shop. And then later they found it in their own storeroom. I, I say, I saw this book, uh, what color, what name, you know. Uh, at that time I was looking for Bhagavajita. Huh? And, and I couldn't afford the big one, okay. I said, you have the very small one. Huh? Now about this size. I described the size, a uh, paperback, you know, small, condensed. Uh, cheap, <laughs> no money, <laughs> very little money, but want to learn still, want to read Bhagavad-gita. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And they say they don't have. They run out of it long time already. Uh, I said, but you have, I saw it. That's why I came here to ask. I saw it yesterday in your shop. I didn't have money. Today I came with the money, I want to buy it. Said, no, we don't have it long time already. Uh, you must be mistaken for something else. Say, no, it's Bhagavad Gita, blue color, and written in black word outside. Yeah, about this size. No have, ma'am. We was last time, long time ago, don't have. <laughs> I know what I have in my bookshop, a very small bookshop. In India, they don't have big things, uh, especially in uh, somewhere like near Rishikesh and stuff like that. They don't have just a small bookshop. And so it so was small like this only, yeah? <laughs> And then when I pass by the next day, they say, oh, come here, we have it for you. <laughs> I don't remember if I had money that day, I had to come back and buy it. But then everybody call everybody, you know, Indian, yeah? <laughs> they don't have paper, newspaper there, but they have running newspaper, you know, on two legs. And every, come, come, see the, the seer or whatever they call, a seer, the sage, something like that. Ah, she know everything. Uh, she know we have book even in box in the store. <laughs> and then they explained that they have ordered it, okay? And it came. But they did not know they have. Because another guy was taking care of the shop and he wasn't there that day. And then the, the books are still in the box, many books. I said, how many you want? I said, only one. <laughs> because they have a lot in one box. I said, I want only one. Then they think, I have this and that, and sage and seers, and then I call everybody. So one of the person, uh, I think he's a shop owner, was also called and to witness, and then he wants to be my disciple right there and then. <laughs> I said, no, I'm no master. You have so many gurus. <laughs> I'm here just to learn. I'm a pilgrim, yeah? I'm looking for master, <laughs> etc., etc. But I already practiced Kuan Yin Method, yeah? And then the other say, oh, I see your aura, the other look at my hand, oh, you will be Buddha soon, <laughs> etc., etc. So they all hurrah up, you know? <laughs> I don't remember if my ego has become big or not, but suddenly it wasn't unpleasant. It just kind of surprised and it made me feel a little on edge, you know? Me, Buddha? Oh, I must be joking. <laughs> so I don't think about it. <laughs> so I did not think much. So I asked him, oh, if you want, <laughs> I don't know how to teach you, but if you really want, you come back here tomorrow. Come to the other side of the, the Ganges River, yeah? At that time, uh, is a, a kind of a rainy season. The Ganges is very unpredictable. And uh, I say, come early morning, four o'clock. Four o'clock, there's no boat, nothing. But I did not know there is a bridge far away that he could cross and go to my side. <laughs> I thought it, because they say like that, I don't believe in Buddha, nothing, or Master, nothing. So I tell him that, so he will forget it. No, he did not forget. He really come. <laughs> I thought he could not. Four o'clock, there's no boat, you know? And turbulent water, no boat would come even, would even cross. And also, it's too early, you know? Mm. But I did not know there's a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bridge of far away. Uh, he's a little bit late because he has to cross a bridge of far from far away from where he shop. Well, he, he came and so he's my first disciple. Many years later, I come back, pass by the shop. He's still there. Yeah. Oh, my great guru, come, great guru. <laughs> he announced to the whole, whoever he can see. <laughs> you know, I'm only one, one meter, uh, 40 something. Uh, my great guru, <laughs> my big guru <laughs> coming. I was very embarrassed. Then he invited me to his house. 
Uh, and I was worried, you know, I'm from Western, you know. Um, he so worshiped me like that, you know, adoring like that. I, I said, be careful, your wife. Uh, will she say anything? <laughs> Even if I'm in India. In India, the wife don't ever leave the husband. No, I don't think they make scenes, you know, especially if it's your guru, yeah? But I was from Western, you know, come there just uh, one, two years and don't <laughs> still worry about wife. He said, no, no problem, come, come, come. And the wife just say hello, that's it, and she kind of disappears. She don't even stay there. <laughs> yeah, maybe she doesn't, she already have another guru, I don't know. <laughs> And then we talk, and then he invite other people to come see my great guru. Oh my, my God! <laughs> That's the first time I know. <laughs> I know how to be a guru. You know, you just sit there, yeah, and don't say anything. It's the best because you might say the wrong thing <laughs> in Indian tradition. Just sit there, and everybody come. <laughs> not, not yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. <laughs> Hari Krishna, Hari Ram, bless you. Whatever you say, Om. You know, and they are happy and. Uh, they're happy. And then they left, and I say, I, I must go because I want to escape from this, <laughs> from this circle of adoration. You know, I was uncomfortable and not used to it. And you know, newborn guru, <laughs> baby guru, <laughs> was so very uh, worse than the coconut ceremony yesterday. <laughs> All eyes were on you, no? Yesterday I'm more used to it, thousands already, but that time I was not, not even thirty years old. And all eyes are on me, you know, the small village, but a lot of people. And uh, I was really nervous, you know, <laughs> uncomfortable <laughs> to be a guru. <laughs> so and then I left, yeah. Mm, I don't ever go back there again. I don't pass by his shop ever again. <laughs> Being a guru at that time is really not favorable time yet. <laughs> <laughs> 